Hello everyone, this is where we get to look at the firewall portion of our Cisco wireless router and firewall combo. Your router should also have some similar features to the ones we are about to demonstrate today. So this router slash firewall is connected to the web via the internet board. We can take a look. I'll go ahead and click on status. Takes me to a dashboard. We can see that the WAN port is connected. It's lit up and green. This dashboard can give us a lot of info, including we have a computer connected in off of port 1 of our LAN port. My computer is sitting behind this router firewall on the local area network. This is the inside network, and we will have the ability to configure that inside network and firewall with rules. So this firewall supports a dematerialized zone, a DMZ. This is a subnetwork that is going to be open to the public, but it does exist behind the firewall. A DMZ will allow us to redirect packets going to my WAN port IP address to a specific LAN port device. We'll do that today. We can also set up firewall rules to limit what type of traffic can reach the DMZ so it isn't an open door for all network connections. Let's set it up. We can do it. What we're going to do first is go into networking followed by LAN. Like we're doing a firewall though. Yes, the DMZ configuration settings on this box are in the LAN area. When I click on DMZ host, we can see here that we get a small amount of options. What we want to do first is we want to actually activate the DMZ. To do that, I'll just go ahead and click on enable for the DMZ. Next, we need to actually set the host IP address, which is going to be a fixed static IP for the end device that's going to operate in the DMZ. I'm going to change this to 192.168.1.200, which will be the IP address of the end device that should be reachable from the outside world. I'll go ahead and click save and we'll save our settings. Next, it would be worthwhile to take a look at some port forwarding settings. That's going to be in our firewall section. So I'll click on firewall and we're going to go straight over to single port forwarding. Now port forwarding allows us to redirect traffic from the internet by looking for specific traffic arriving on the WAN port. We then forward it to a specific internal end device on one of our LAN ports. By default, we can see there's a couple items created for us. They are not activated because the enable button has not been checked and also there's no internal IP address to forward the traffic to. Now this is an awesome feature for hosting services on end devices that need to be reachable from the outside. This could be common for accessing internal devices from the outside, such as IP cameras, gaming servers, and more that you'd have on your internal network. What we're going to do is create our own port forwarding rule. I'm going to name mine IPCAM1. And with IPCAM1 as the name, I will then choose the external port that the people are hitting on the WAN port of my router. So for example, let's say people will be targeting my WAN IP address with a port number of 8090. Then when traffic is hitting my WAN port on port 8090, we're going to have that target an internal port running on our IP camera device. That internal port on the IP camera device, for example, might be 1044. I would choose the protocol being used by my IP camera. Most likely it'll be UDP based. The WAN interface, I'm going to choose Ethernet. 3G is possible because my wireless VPN router firewall combo does support a 3G cellular data connection for WAN. We don't need that. We'll use Ethernet, which is the WAN port we have plugged in. Lastly, I need to type in the private IP address of my IP camera. This would be 192.168.1.150. I'll make sure I have this rule be activated by clicking the Enable checkbox, and then we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we will click Save. We're good to go. Now we're going to continue on and take a look at some of our basic settings of our firewall. Oddly enough, we're just going to click Basic Settings. I love it. When the screen loads up, what we're going to do is take a look at some of the default security settings that have been set. From the top, we have some anti-spoofing settings in order to protect against internal users that are trying to pretend to be a network device that they are not. That is turned on by default. We also have denial of service protection, which is going to prevent our firewall from being overwhelmed by malicious traffic. We're even blocking ping requests because we're not going to respond to people that try to ping our internet address on our router's WAN port. A bit further down, we can see that our firewall is only allowing an administrator to configure it by using an encrypted HTTPS session. That's right here called remote access. These remote settings here, if we actually allowed them, 
would actually allow an administrator to exist outside on the internet and remotely access our router and change the configurations. Now, there are a lot of security settings down below here regarding allowing specific IP addresses to do this from the public side, as well as a port that the WAN port will be listening on. But then again, this is going to be a risky maneuver. So if you do that, be sure you have a very strong password or passphrase. Scrolling down to the bottom, we now are going to take a look at UPnP. UPnP is known as Universal Plug and Play. This will allow automatic discovery of devices that can communicate with the firewall. And the scary part is, if necessary, even modify our firewall to allow for device access from outside the WAN. This would be using features such as port forwarding. Now, while the universal plug and play settings may offer convenience, it's better to set up your own firewall rules and port forwarding yourself. Now, if we want to do some more fine control of what can happen regarding internal traffic, especially stuff that wants to go out to the web, we can. I can go to my access rules section and here I can find this special area where I can add in rows of rules. For example, by clicking on add row, inside of here I can choose the connection type, going inbound or going outbound. For example, let's say coming inbound, WAN to LAN. I can have an action, what's going to happen regarding this traffic. Also, we can even set up a schedule for when this should take place, time and day. Regarding services, we can pick what type of traffic. We can even do even more fine-tuned controlling than this using the Configure Services area. Source from what place on the internet could be any. Destination from what place inside my internal network. Single address. You have single address because we're talking about traffic destined for our local area network. This is where we would choose what devices on the internal side should not have traffic arriving to it from a specific public WAN. We're able to activate this rule using our enable button. Also, we're even able to log it. So when this traffic does come through and it is dropped, it will actually be taken note of inside of our wireless router firewall. So what we want to do now is focus more on content preventing users from reaching specific websites, the inside to outside, but being able to talk content, not just IP addressing like we see here. That's going to be under internet access policy. I'll click on that and we'll head over there next. In Internet Access Policy, I can create multiple policies and activate them on my firewall. I'm going to be able to, let's say, whitelist and blacklist items. Let me show you. I'll click Add Row. And inside of here, we can create a policy name. For example, we can call it Test. And with it being called Test, we then have actions. What to do regarding this policy we're about to create. Block in a schedule, allow in a schedule, always block it or always allow it. That's called blacklist or whitelist, respectively. Down below, apply access policy to the following PCs. You can choose who this policy is going to be effective for. We can base it off of a range of addresses, a specific IP address, or even hardware level, MAC address. Besides that, when we want to talk about what can we actually block, down below in the website domain name and keyword area, we can click add row here, and here you can choose to block based off of domain name or even based off of a keyword that's going to be utilized. Now this is going to be awesome. The reason it's going to be awesome is because this all works together to identify the devices as well as to identify what they're allowed to access or not allowed to access. Now with all these settings we've looked at, every firewall will be a little bit different, but the best thing you can do is practice in their configurations and view the result on an internal PC of that network. Make sure you do this outside of business hours and you